Yes. All right, so last episode, we asked you a question. What was the first thing you you stole? And you went into the chocolate. Stole? You didn't say what. Uh, oh, borrowed. Borrowed, borrowed. Oh. Acquired or borrowed. <laughs> yeah, so what was the last thing you borrowed slash last? Oh, man. I ain't never give it up. I ain't never you know give it up. Take, take, taking that crown from you. I ain't worried about you. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never give it up, I ain't never you know give it up. Take, take, taking that crown from you. Welcome to Breaking the Cycle Podcast, episode, episode number, number four. We are doing <laughs> part four of 17 things your kids are dying to know about you. And let's get into it. So what? 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 What was going on back here? What's so funny? Nothing! You guys are over here <laughs> laughing. Behind the scenes. Because here's what happened. <clears throat> is while we were getting you set up, these two screwballs are back here screwing around. Whoops. Not knowing that I went back there and hit record. So I might have to add some of the clips of the stuff that was going on before this episode if on the behind the scenes. If you guys want to see the behind the scenes, go to Tyson's um, YouTube channel, Freak Fit. And the behind the scenes YouTube short will be posted on there. All right, so what's this episode gonna be about? This episode is gonna be about 17 things your kids are dying to know about you, so and us. And so this is the fourth segment on this, so we've done three segments on this already, and how many questions have we gotten? You have the, the whole list we, of what we've done already, we right? We have, we have seven questions left. Okay. We did I'm, 10 questions already? I'm very, Holy very, crap. very sorry, everyone. So this is probably gonna be two more episodes to finish off these 17. I'm probably very, very sorry, everyone, but before we start, who wants to start? Oh shoot! Here we go. What do we got? What do you call? Uh, wait, I mean, what do you give? Why did you just whisper her to her, her? I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I heard that. You know, this mic could pick up very sensitive sounds. Cause she's stealing my joke. No, I, bet, I found it. I bet you could hear on her here. I, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. So anyway, what do you give to a sick lemon? What do you get? I'll let you stall. What do you give to a sick lemon? Sour something, sour, sweet and sour, sour grapes, sour cough medicine, sour, what do you, what's the question again? Oh my god. I said I'd let him Just stop. say it again clear. What is it? What do you give? What do you give Go to ahead. a sick lemon? Don't try to give me hints. Don't try to like, what do you give to a sick lemon? Juice. Orange juice. Lemon juice. Vitamin C. Give to a sick lemon, sunlight, juice, squeeze. It was. Give me a hint. Don't give me the answer. Give me a hint. Um, juice. You were onto it with juice. Orange juice, squeeze juice, sour juice, juice. Give me another hint. Jeez. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's juice. juice. Uh, lemon is in the answer. Lemon, lemon juice. No. Lemon squeeze juice. Oh my god. Lemon is in the. What do you give to a sick lemon? Lemon. Lemon's in the answer, and I'm on something with juice. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the answer because it's too late. I failed. First aid, lemonade. Lemonade. Oh, lemon aid, like AI. All right, all right. Don't zero kick, out don't of kick a man when he's down, so I got zero out of one points. All right. Well, I just did. So we've had some very tough, com Ow. tough questions that they've had for me in the last. Three weeks, the last first three episodes of this, and I think we're onto something here with these questions. So we're we've started off this podcast as we redid this because we've done live videos a lot together, like many of them. But so we we re, redid this as a podcast, and we thought the perfect way to do it was to do these seventeen questions, which we thought at first was going to be one episode, and now it's turning into be like four or five episodes. But I think even after that, you're not going to be out of questions. I think that's going to be a regular segment every week where you just have one question of the week for me. <gasps> That'd be cool. Away. See, Thank that's a good you. segment to have. Push of the week. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't and I was actually high fiving him. So after this, because that's because that's not gonna be all you wanna know. It's gonna be an ongoing thing. You wanna keep you wanna keep knowing more and more after yeah. that, right? Yeah. So I think that'll be a good thing to add on, just like we have another hit for the nosebleeds, and I'll make sure we have those every week. We don't have one this week, unfortunately. Well we have old ones that we're gonna reuse, but this week, unless you want to do one, we could You know how I say we have another hit from the nosebleeds? Yeah. Tyson should say, here's our question of the week. Wow, so you get the cool one. Another hit, and he says, here's a question of the week. Like, he, he gets yeah, like that. Yeah, question of the week. That sounds 
for real. Okay, now we'll do both. All right, so we got a joke out of the way. We gave the explanation of what's going on. What is this show about, just in general? Just break them down. Just what is this in not this episode specifically, but this the overall show. What is it about? Can I go? For it? Breaking the cycle is a podcast on how, on how to be a positive male role model and lead your freak family. By breaking the cycle and changing the trajectory of your family tree so that you become the type of man your son would want to become and the type of daughter you and the type of man The your type daughter. of daughter? <laughs> no. Now are, are you assuming my gender? No. And the type What do you of think so funny about that? I would jab you with this tactical pen. To marry. As, as he's saying this, like, I'm just kind of looking around. I was back here. If you could see what's on the other side of this little wall here. Like, this is a supposed to be like a bar where we turn it into a recording studio slash like there's a wall survival here chamber. That makes his office, and that wall was never there. So, this, this is, used to be a bar. There is so much gear Some. back here and survival stuff. There are magazines and knives and weapons and kukuris and batteries and... It's fire, a kukri. Fire starters. You used to Holy call it a crap. And Holy there's crap. A, this thing. Yeah, very important. I think it's from the, from the mic. I don't know what that's from. All right, so let's go. Wait, let's get the, okay, going so with the questions. Original, um, no, there's no joke. <laughs> the joke split up throughout the thing. Oh, the spot, second part of the show. What do we got? Second part of the intro. So these are the types of conversations you should be having with your kids. So they can learn to think for themselves and are not afraid to be themselves when they are confronted with these life situations so they are not in shock and have an idea on how to approach it. Excellent. I've memorized that one. Wow. I'm going to do the first question this time. Okay. All right. So what do we got? Uh, I'm sure you, have you put, you both know the question you're asking, like you put some deep thought into this. These are like real good questions to have some good, deep, meaningful conversations on. Yes. Yes. All right, so last episode, we asked you a question. What was the first thing you you stole? And you went into the chocolate. Stole? We didn't say what. Oh, borrowed. Borrowed, borrowed. Oh, acquired or borrowed. <laughs> yeah, so what was the last thing you borrowed slash last? Oh, man. Slash, slash. <laughs> stole. That's a tough one. I can't even think of it. I'm looking around to see if there's anything that I... Acquired. This is tough. I don't know if there is any. I can't. It's... There's too the much. The last thing you you I, I never <laughs> acquired. The last acquired. thing I acquired. Probably. I don't even know. Like we go. Did you did you acquire anything after the Marines? Like you go to a hotel and. You steal Maybe. the key card. I, oh, whoops. A key card? Actually, you guys have like towels. a collection of key cards. You have towels, then you end up having towels. Mommy you wrap, you wrap, the the towels. snitches end up in ditches. You might have your wet clothes from the pool like wrapped up in a towel and you threw it in your bag and you get home and you have some towels that you acquired and then now you have extra towels for the gym. So maybe... Oh, we just went to a hotel a week ago. Maybe something like that, I guess. Or... That's... That's... Oh, here's a good one. I, I got it. I got it. It actually happened. Like, this is just in that. Is that where was the lights when, when the lights went out? That was in that hotel. Oh, the power yeah. outage. All right. So yeah, <gasps> the day. Oh, I remember. I had to speak that day. Yeah. No. No. That, what was no, I no that was oh, I had to get to the Squire program. So I had to wake up at like three a.m. Uh, we were at a three-day event. Oh, I remember. I attended this, the yeah. first day. The second day, I had to leave the event to go do the Squire program, father-son program where it's for sons 13 to 15, a rite of passage, a full day experience that we run all around the country. And there's now different licensees around North Carolina and Arizona and, and Texas, and also our home base here in California, where we do these programs every few months. So if you have a, a son, father, son experience, send out a message and we can get you set up for the Squire program. So I had to leave and I was speaking the third day of this event. So I had to leave the second day for the Squire program. I had to wake up at like 3 a.m. because I had to drive about an hour and we were starting at 4.35 or 5, but I wanted to get there at least 30 minutes early, so I left at like 3.30. So I woke up at 3, or like 2.45 or something crazy, and there was a storm in Texas the night before you guys. Remember that storm? Right? Oh, yeah. Lights went out. So I get there, 3 a.m., having to go, and we're on the 20, what floor are we 20th. On? 20th floor. And so the elevators are out. Were the elevator, elevators out when you guys woke up? Oh, yeah. yeah, they were out for almost the whole day. And then, and they when, and then when they finally turned back on at like 3 or 4 p.m., 
So we were, we were, us were, in, we were in the hotel room, and we went to the elevator, and we went to go open it, because she had to go heat up her oatmeal, and it opened up, and we were standing there for like two minutes, seeing if we should go into the elevator or go back into the room, because we, we did not trust those things. Imagine you get trapped in the middle of the elevator on the halfway up, and it was just shut had, down. At least we had food. Bad. So here's what happened. So... The elevator's dead. I have to get to the Squire program. I can't sit and wait. I, there's a phone. There's, every elevator has a phone like for the, the uh -huh. maintenance phone. So I pick it up. I'm like, all right, let me ask. Maybe the elevator's broken. So I ask. Like, yeah, sorry, the power's out. Elevator's down. I'm like, all right, copy that. Got to walk down the flight of stairs. I have two heavy backpacks. One on my back and one I'm carrying. And my, and my little weapon pouch that I carry. So I have three bags on me. Has all my food and drinks and changes of clothes and shoes for the day because we get dirty and muddy at the Squire and it's going to rain maybe. So I have probably close to 30 pounds of shit probably with me. I had to go down the 20 something flight of stairs. I get to the bottom. I try to exit into the hotel. The door is locked. And now the door behind me closed. Now I'm locked in this little bottom thing on the bottom floor. I can't get outside. I can't get back into the hotel. So I go up one flight of stairs to the first floor and... It's locked. I'm like, there is no way I'm walking back up 21 flight of stairs. Hell no. At like, I'm, I'm like dripping sweat at this point. I have all this weight and I'm going really fast down because I want to make sure I'm early and not late to this event. I don't know if there's going to be traffic. You get a flat tire. I like to be places early. And those and those stairs are big. It's like three. There was, yeah, there was like something about it. I was going for like, it felt like I was already sweating. And it's like, just, well, we and I was only up. on the 15th floor going down. I'm like, what the frick? I know, the, the, those stairs, I think they're, they like hypnotize you or something. I was walking forever going down. It was a, and we've done much more stairs than that, but this one seemed long. So I get down there and I'm locked in. Luckily, actually, the two, where's the other one? The two, the two knives I happen to have on me, they happen to be right here. That's pretty odd. So there's this one, it's a good tactical fix, why am I showing that? Tactical fix blade and then my carry folding knife. Luckily, I had them both on me. I had to go and Jimmy open a door lock. Jimmy. Huh? Jimmy. You Jimmy. Jimmy and Shimmy. You Jimmy it open. And so I break into this door and I get inside and I'm in this big kitchen like back area of a ballroom. Like I guess where they prepare the food and prepare the uh, gear. I know where you were. You were by the bar that we got our cups from to heat up the oatmeal. So I have to find my way out of here. I'm like, I got to get out of this damn place. I have an event to get to and I still have to drive an hour and all this other stuff. I don't really know where I'm going. So I'm finding my way through this whole kitchen, this back area, and I end up in this ballroom where there's, it's all set up. They must have set up the night before, some event, all these tables and all these nice settings. And I'm dripping sweat. I'm like, you know what? I Maybe deserve I a little reward. Yeah. So they had all these fancy bottled waters, like with these electrolytes and all this stuff, like these like real nice bottled waters. You should have left a note saying thank you. So I, and then they had bowls of fruits. I got a banana and two of those bottles of water because I need to replenish my electrolytes after going down those stairs. I had to go perform and I was, I, I, I thought I may pass out. It was a health issue, so it was, I was needed, but it's funny. I really couldn't think of a time and it literally just happened to, just bananas and maybe, maybe apples. It might've been only bananas, but it was a good banana. <laughs> and the water, the waters weren't flavored, but it was like, you know, the ones that they say they have the pH balance and all this like weird shit and minerals. It, it was like, that was a good water like boss too. water? Yeah, the boss water. So uh, were the bananas like mommy bananas or were they? No, these were like, like perfect. These ones were oh, perfect. We these were ready to we roll. We should have showed you the pictures of the mommy bananas. Yeah, she needs them nice and overly ripe by about three and a half months where they're pure mush and slime. So as, as I thought I wasn't going to be able to think of something, look at that. Wow. That was what, a week ago? And we have a whole story behind it. And I got some awesome water. And a free banana out of it that I acquired. But, all right, maybe, is that wrong, really? I mean, think about it. Am I wrong for doing that? I kind of took this stuff that wasn't mine. You're but, not wrong at all. I would have done the same thing. thing. But maybe I should have gone back and told them, hey, I took a couple bottles, of, like, later in the day. Thinking back, like, the real, real, real right thing to do, maybe I should have done that. But I don't you know. took, maybe they had, maybe they were on camera. I got to say that. So it's like we're teaching good lessons to oh, the kids. Yeah. I can't teach my kids to steal shit. Yeah, but... But it is kind of true. I could have done yeah, that. Like, if you really want to really be, like, overboard, like, do the right thing, are they going to miss two bottles of water and banana? No. The messed up thing is, I was in such a hurry. They had all the waters. They were so perfectly lined. I took, like, two in the front, two <laughs> in the front. Someone's going to come in in the morning, and the, the people are going to come in, and, who, like, whoever the person that was supposed to set up in the nighttime, 
the bot, the manager's gonna get there for the morning shift and they're gonna call him up. I told you, this is me lined up. It is a mess. There's missing from the front. The bananas are all off center and there's a missing banana from the bunch. Like the people are gonna walk in and see this ugly hole of the water pile that's missing the two bottles. It was good though, it but, was good water. So with the water bottles, maybe not the bananas, but say the water bottles, say they knew everybody that was coming to the party or whatever. And they only had enough? Yeah, they only had enough. Two people would be missing a water bottle. They're gonna be dehydrated because of me. I was gonna die, I had to go down the slice stairs. This is an emergency. This is a life or it death situation. If one person so let me ask you this, tail. let me ask you this. So you, asked, so you asked last week, quickly. what was the first no, thing I acquired? People. Today you asked me, what's the last thing I acquired on the first thing you might have known about that candy I might have told you about the candy maybe not yeah, the whole yeah. story not the whole story though but all I right so the lat when you asked this question today did you think that there was going to be something or I would come up with something or you weren't sure what do you think I thought it what do you think be, was going to happen with that question I thought it was going to be like right before you got into the marines like you stole something oh and that stuff was happening every day before the Marines. You, you, oh, whoops, I actually said that. Acquired, S we're Acquired. live. <laughs> Hello? This is going out to millions and millions and possibly billions of people across the lands, and you're gonna. There's throw... only 8 million people on Earth. 8 million? Did you hear this, doof? There's only 8 million. How, can How you could you not? I am a failure as a home educator. How could you get to 8 billion people? So, anyway. There's only 8 million people on planet Earth. So, yeah, before, like. I just there was stuff being acquired. We don't need to go into all that. There was stuff yeah, being acquired yeah, yeah. on a regular basis when I was a teenager before the Marines all the time from cars, from houses, from stores, from my own jobs that I worked at. Everything. Wow, you were messed up. What was your favorite thing that you acquired? That's just a... Oh, man. You just want to... A long question. Ask death. So, there's... Me and my friends, when I was like after high school, before the Marines, it was like a year and a half time period that was just pure freaking mayhem. Like that's why the judge said you're going to the Marines or you're going to jail, basically. So he, oh, we would go out at nighttime on the weekend or not even on the weekend, it didn't matter. It could be a weekday. It's not like it mattered. We weren't going to school or anything. And scope, like you, you hear us all the time, people scoping out. I was one of those scumbags that you scope out houses and scope out cars. That was me. That's why I know what to look for when we see that stuff happening. We see those weird cars going by and all this other stuff. And you say, how do you know? Like, I was one of those scumbags. But we would scope, look, peek inside cars. It looked like there's anything worth taking. What are you doing? Are you cracking your stinky ass toe knuckles while I'm talking? That's very distracting. Ow. So, so... See, you crack your knuckles. Now I lost track of the whole story. You're All right, if you need to crack your knuckles, you could excuse yourself and go crack those knuckles somewhere else because those feet stank <laughs> on top of that. So we'd scope the cars out, houses out, usually more cars. We really weren't, houses once in a while if, we, if you knew something was like, it was worth going in there. But we'd look in the cars and we'd look for electronics, like back then with Walkmans or Discomans, which is a CD player you had to put inside and play it and it would spin it. And that's like how you right now, if to someone, one CD at a time, you could put the thing. If someone sees like a, like a phone or like a tablet in a car, it's like a. a so we saw in this one car, it was like a teddy bear, like this big. And this one guy I was with, with like maybe his girlfriend was mad at him or something. He just saw the teddy bear. He's like, all right, we need to get that teddy bear. So we're going to break into this car for this freaking teddy bear. For a teddy bear. <laughs> a teddy bear. So they thought they were like these high class criminals. Like on a lawnmower, there's a thing called a. A spark, spark plug. plug. It's like this oh, ceramic yeah, glass thing. Would you stop cracking your knuckles? Yes. I don't care about cracking knuckles. Not when you. someone's talking. Okay. Jeez. Tell. Can you focus? So they, they said if you break the spark plug and it goes into these little tiny crystallized pieces that you just have to flick it at, uh, throw it at a, a car and it'll crack the window and then it'll like, and, and you could just like go through it silently and break it silently. So they thought they were like these like high level criminals. And so they do it and they throw it. And it doesn't work. They throw it again and it doesn't work. They're like, what's wrong with this? It really should be working. They thought they were like these super spy CIA, like street, like multi millionaire criminals. And the shit ain't working. Right before that, we were in someone's backyard and took like some random tools, saw or a hammer or something. So I had some stuff on me. So I'm like, wait, I have a better, I have an even better way of doing this, a real high tech way of doing this, even better than the spark club. They're like, yeah, what's that? I pull out the hammer and break the window right open and blast and it makes such a loud noise, like a crashing noise. So we all run, go hide in the bushes 
wait for about 10 minutes to see if anyone heard it. There's like two, three. I want to do this. Oh, great. I'm fun. a very good influence. I want to buy I went to jail for this, for this, by the way. So, oh. so yeah, if you want to do it, then go ahead. So crash, <laughs> not for this, but something I got. And it's funny. All right. Sunny story. Uh, yeah. See, so you, yeah. you, you ask these questions and it goes down yeah. this whole hole. Back to the teddy bear. So yeah, so the window's broken, big noise. We run and go hide in the bushes like 100 yards away to see, all right, did anyone hear it? Is any light switch on? 10 minutes, dead silent. The funny thing is, the police station's here, across the street, down the road. That's where we did it on. Literally like a 16th of a mile. House? 16th of a mile from a police station. So oh my God. no one called the cops, but we knew where the woods were. We'd be able to run into the woods and get away. Like we, It was, you know, whatever. We were good. So... No one came out. It's like, all right, let's go get the damn teddy bear. This dude's girlfriend is mad at him. He's going to go get her a little teddy bear. Not a little, it's big, big teddy bear. We go in there to get the teddy bear. And it's not there. No, it's there. We get it. And he, he takes it. There's but a we start, inside. We start fiddling around. We hit the mother load. It was like a jackpot. There was a C, little CD player thing in there. There was a in the bag. In the teddy bear? No, in the car. Just oh. underneath, like under junk, under jackets. There was a bag filled of like... 30 or 40 music CDs, like back then CDs, like whatever, got a bag of those. In the trunk, we saw when we were doing that, this speaker, they call woofers, this big speaker, like when you play, it shakes oh. the whole car. Uh -huh. It was in there. And so we took, we're running down the street with this bat, <laughs> me, and I'm the only white kid in the, in the, in the, in the crew. So it's me and all, and my black friends running down the street, <laughs> one hugging a teddy bear, one holding a bag of CDs, one with electronics, and me with this big speed. It's like 50 pounds, like this massive speaker, like <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Like the one in the garage, but like twice as No, it's not playing. So it's in the garage. That speaker. No, like the one we have in the garage, oh. that like DJ speaker, like you, two yeah. of those. Did and you're playing in a small car. Imagine the playing in a small car that loud and that powerful. <laughs> Literally, your windows, which you shake and you see your windows vibrating when you yeah, pull it all the way up. Yeah, people did that on YouTube, I saw one time. And so we installed that into my car, my 1988 Ford Mustang. You asked in one of the previous questions, or one of the previous ones about the first car. We got arrested for something else another time. And that speaker was in my car. And the cops took it out thinking it was stolen. And they said, we're running this to see if it's stolen. They ran it, checked it, no one ever reported it stolen which is weird. And so they gave it back to me. The cops took that speaker from, we got, a, I got, I got arrested for something else. And I was in my car and I got arrested. They took the speaker out and it cost like $150 to get that thing whole installed. I had to have like an amplifier and all these wiring through the thing. They just ripped it all out, checked it. And like, here, you can take it back. It's not stolen. I'm like, well, what about, that's your problem. Like that's how they, but I deserved it. Cause I was an ass, but think about it. If I was just really a purely innocent kid and they did that kind of stuff, think how messed up that is. They ripped the thing out when I just had it installed and now I had to go pay to get it reinstalled again. I think I didn't, I think I just sold it at that point because I was like, whatever, I'm getting rid of this thing. But they gave it back. But you know what that told me? Wow. That that shit was stolen in the first place. That's what I thought. That's how I justified it. Like, think about it. Those, person, those people didn't report their car getting broken into and told the cops what got stolen out of their car. When they woke up in the morning, they saw their window bashed in. Why wouldn't, wouldn't they say Maybe they never this big speaker, up. this big speaker, so that it was not reported stolen. They checked the serial numbers, nothing, whatever, and they gave it back to me. And that was like, like maybe a, a couple. That was a couple months later because we already had it installed and used it for a while. That thing was pretty cool. So that, was, that speaker was the favorite thing, and the story about it too, with their little high tech little things and that. Wait, do you know, know what happened to the teddy bear? Do you know what happened to the teddy bear? Did that guy's girlfriend survive it? I what the frick? I don't know. This was literally I was 17, 18, long ass time ago. Who knows? Wow. All right. So there's a long ass answer to your question. And that came from what was the most expensive thing? So I thought it was from another no, question. No, last thing. You said it. Most expensive? Oh. Well, that's the same question. Most low. Why are all your questions about like, geez, you guys are just Sorry. hanging me out to dry about what did you steal? What did you do this? Wait, was that me? You just spit and then you spit. What did you acquire? Acquire. What did you what acquire? Was that, was that the most? I don't know. Cause that take. I thought that was. I thought we were a asking that question, but it was the favorite. Midge asked you favorite. Uh, was my that was that probably one. might be it. I did like some watches and shit like that. Some electronics, maybe something like that, might have been more expensive than the speaker. But the speaker was up there, definitely. Okay, so that we knocked out a few questions there. These are all telling these stories. Let's make this clear. 
to give lessons on what not to do, the wrong things to yes. do, how you head down the wrong path, and all this other stuff. Yes, so, not cycle. Breaking, breaking the cycle, exactly. We're talking about things Good you want point. to break. <laughs> all right, what do we got next? We I got bet a he joke? broke a lot of things he wanted to You got a thing? Wire. Oh, I'll do a joke. You did the lesson? Yeah. yeah. All right, so all let's right. go. Let's hear it. I'm pretty sure I didn't ask this one. Let me get my scorecard because I'm going to get a point and a half on this one. What do you got? Which state has the most roads? He did this. What? Which state has the most roads? He did this. No, I didn't. No. Oh. Wait, say it again because I can't tell the last word you're saying. Which state has the most roads? Look at that, you drive. Roads? Spell it, please. R O A D. S. All right, now start counting, please. You, oh. you, I don't know if you said Rose, R-O-W-S. You have like this oh. hillbilly accent. I can't tell what you're saying. Which state? Now stop. You're making, you can't be clacking that because that, no, start over because that's like very distracting. What happens to your middle of your finger? Your huh? Huh? It's just from lifting it. Lifting weights and pull-ups? I'm trying to distract you, try to think of an answer. Oh. And you fell stop. for it. Stop. stop. You can't put that on my face. It's very distracting. I I'm can't, counting. I have to focus. Stop. You can't put it on my face. I can't look. What state has the most roads? A crossroad, interstate. Interstate highway. What state? state? I know, but an interstate is a road. It's a highway. Mm-hmm. Roads? Rhode Island. Bingo. Bam, that's a point. Not not one and a half, that's a point. So I'm one, you you get one out, of out of two. Nice. Rhode Island, that was pretty good that I came up with that. Yes, I do. Good. I came up with that, that was pretty good that I got that. It's hard because there's 50 states to think of. I don't know how, I, how it just clicked. All right, what's your next question? All right. Can I click the next? Uh, no, you did. The, you did the favorite one slash expensive. So I'm gonna go. Did you take any meds as a kid? You did this one, didn't we? Nope. But somehow we talked about that tooth at that time. Did we talk about it when I had my tooth taken out? Or maybe I told you in person. I don't remember. When I was a kid, the only medication I took as a kid, and it still affected me. I didn't take medication anymore. Was like stuff that makes you not get car sick, and it's just like. You know how you take like cold medicine? It's like that. It's like you just buy it at the store. It's not like a prescription. I never took a prescription drug Ever? in my life until I was how old, 30, how old are you? 35 maybe? 30, how old were you when you were three? I must have been what, 36, 37? 35. Until I had a tooth, had to get a tooth pulled out. Yeah, 35. So, and, I was only, and it was only a prescription drug. Like uh, aspirin, but just a prescription high level of aspirin. You know, like regular uh-huh. stuff you buy, but like a high level of it. That's all it is when you go get it. You can only get it in that high level. It's the same as probably if you took three or four of those, I guess, like that you buy in a store. And that was when I was like 30. That was the first time I ever took any. Prescription drug? Were you already over there? You're like, you're taking a nap. First time I ever took any prescription, prescription drug. The first any, time? I never took medicine even. I don't even believe in it. I don't even believe in now. Like if I have a headache, if you if I get an injury... If I get hurt, an injury, a hundred pound weight falls on your pinky and I want to go work out, maybe I would consider taking like ibuprofen or whatever those acetaminophen, yeah, those like yeah, yeah. aspirin, Tylenol, because it's an injury that you can't do anything about. But if I just have a headache that just came about, I don't believe in taking medicine for it. Like medicine, what is med- what is a painkiller going to do for a headache that I got because I didn't sleep enough or because I didn't drink enough water or because I ate too much crappy food or sugar or not eat, didn't eat enough like there's a reason for that headache so i'm going to undo the reason and learn my lesson and deal with that damn headache and un and unscrew it up and learn my lesson to not let that happen again like that's what i think of headaches even nowadays even as adult but an injury you you, you i hurt uh, the shoulder in jiu-jitsu but i want to go work out i think a couple times i might have taken like i like a, just a regular time and all stuff when i went to go work out because it's a Actual injury that you could, you, nothing could have prevented. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah, oh, yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh huh. So Did before that, the only time I wouldn't even go to the doctor. I went to the doctor like one time, and they thought I was nuts because I used to make pretend I was sick a lot of times so and not go to school. I would say I had a stomach ache. Earache was my go-to because like an earache, I figured if you have a stomach ache, they're not gonna let me eat food. And when you stay away from school and you have the day off, you want to eat like a bunch of junk food and whatever. So I came up with an earache. That was like my main go-to thing that I had an earache. Because, I had a bad earache. Because I wanted to eat junk. Because I wanted in, to eat junk. Poland. Because I might have had it once, a real earache. And when I did, I realized, oh, I can still eat whatever I want. I just have an earache. So I'm gonna have to sleep and I have to rest and I get to still eat whatever I want. But if you say you have a stomach ache, oh, just eat crackers and soup. Like, what the frick? 
I'm staying home from school. I want to eat like all kinds of junk while I'm staying home from school. I want to have some fun. So I said I had an earache and I used that one too many times. So my mother brought me to the doctor. One of the only times I could ever remember going to the doctor ever in my whole childhood. And they started asking about the earache and I had to like not let them know that it was like kind of I was making it up half the time. So you know when your heart rate's really up and you feel your heart rate? If you lay on a pillow, you can hear your heart rate in your ear. Mm -hmm. So I told, I tried to think, all right, how can I explain it? So I said, well, when I lay down, it really is weird. And it feels like there's little people jumping up and down inside my ear. I told the doctor that. And they wanted, they probably, shit, if it was nowadays, they would have put me on like some serious mental (laughs) medication, like drugs. I understand you. Because they would have thought I was nuts. But no, medication was the only time when I had a tooth pulled. I was with you. You weren't even born yet. I had to have a tooth pulled at like 30. We had the gym open. And I went, they ripped the tooth out. I'm like, all right, whatever. It doesn't really, they give you the Novocaine, you know, the, the mm-hmm. stuff to make it numb. I'm like, all right, it feels fine. He's like, well, just go straight to the pharmacy and get this painkiller because it, the, it's going to wear off and it's not going to feel good after it wears off. I'm like, I'll be fine. I went back to the gym, trained someone at the gym where your tooth, like, just got this tooth taken out. I had to go, for, I had to go make some damn money. Trained an hour session. He says it's going to wear off in an hour. I'm like, oh, I'm still fine. I was done for the day. I was leaving with you. You were like a, still in like a car seat and all that stuff, like a baby. And I'm starting to drive home thinking, I'm fine. I'm not going to go get this. I never used any medication in my life. I'm not going to the pharmacy. I don't even know how to get a prescription. I don't even know how to pick up a prescription because I've never done it. So I thought you just would walk in. So I'm driving home. Mommy, for some reason, she knows how to do that stuff step by step. <laughs> she's like, yeah, she gives them her she's first like the name, the name. And she's like, she already even knows the names, but she obviously mispronounces them. I'm the only one who doesn't mispronounce them. Oh, wow. So you. I don't even know the process like that. And it screwed me because I'm driving home. We had like a 15 minute drive home. We're about three minutes from home. And that shit, it was already an hour of the work. Well, I got back from the dentist. I trained someone for an hour, hung out of the gym for a few minutes, drove home 15 minutes. That shit wore off. After that time, it's done. It started feeling my head felt like a balloon. This thing is like throbbing and I have to drive a car. And like my, I can hardly see the eye because it's just so much like all up in here because this thing wore off after all this time and I didn't go. So I'm like, oh shit, let me go get the prescription. And so I drive to the, the CVS that was right down the street from our house and when we lived in New York. Oh, wait, was it by the old? So I'm like, suffering. no, this was in Thiel's or Pomona, whatever. There was, there was the a shop right that has CVS right yeah. there. No, in our house, when we had the house. Oh. Right in that oh, shop, yeah, with the shop right in. So I go inside and I'm like, yeah, I need a, pres- here's my prescription, I need this. I'm like, yes, finally, I'm gonna get relief. This is like throbbing. I give them the thing, the piece of paper for the prescription. I thought you'd just give it to them, they hand you some pills. It's like, oh, great. You can come back in about 45 minutes, an hour, and it'll be ready for it. I'm like, what? My, I'm like, are you serious? This thing is like this. And I'm with a little kid. She's like, that's the way it works. She's like, you never got a prescription before? I'm like, nope. So I had to wait another hour. With this. I went to go sit out in the car, and I'm trying to like focus to make it go away. And I remember this happening. If I ever see this motherfucker again, oops, I'm not supposed to curse in this it's a show. It's a kid's show. If I ever see this guy again, we're sitting in the car. I'm with you. You're a little baby. I'm in like severe, like head is ready to explode. I don't know if I, when I got out of the car, I got in the car, maybe when I was bringing, I didn't bump into the car, maybe I got close, it was a car parked next to me. And this guy starts threatening me. This little weasel, this little street little ghetto weasel, like skinny little string bean, starts threatening me. He's with his girlfriend in the car. Like, you know, if I was with you and someone did something in a car next to us and I want to threaten them, but I'm going to talk to you about it. Oh, he's like saying to his girlfriend, this mother, this mother effer, something, something. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll kick his ass. It's something that I was like getting too close to the car, something. He was like, I just ignored it. I'm like, I'm not, a, I'm with a kid. My face is like all swollen and bleeding. I just ignored this guy, but he's lucky he picked the right day to be doing that because the old me, that would have been a different story. But anyway, another one. The long. old me. Wait, um, so the first time I had a prescription was when I was eight years old, so around a year ago. Or not even a year ago, a few months ago, because I just turned nine. Oh, yeah, we do get a prescription. She's not talking or anything. Right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, I forgot what it was called. It was a really long name, and it started with the letter C-H, but it was because, so... The you know everything, every prescription that starts with the letter C-H? You know that's what the B means? Hmm. Cool, cool kids. Cool, cool kids. <laughs> so, what was it for? Why did you need a prescription? So, we were on an RV trip, and... Um, we have one of those RVs where there's like a bed on top of the driver's seat and the co-pilot seat. That's what we call it. 
anyways. But so me and Tyson both chassis. Chassis. Me and Tyson both sleep up in the bunk over the cab. That's what it's called. Anyway, get to the this, you're you go you're worse going off the this topic than I am. So Tyson had this weird disease on his toes, and I guess he spread it to me. And then in the middle of the night, I remember waking up and feeling a bunch of these little needles like throbbing. In, yeah, in, 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 oh. in two of my toes. And then there was this there was this whole entire like it was going around my toe. There was this piece of hard skin that was like yeah, the skin started like, kind of like a crack. All right, you're gonna make the you're gonna make the the seven listeners out there that are listening to this freaking oh, vomit. Like, really, like, I mean the billions. You're gonna make them vomit. There's gonna be seven billion people vomiting across the lands. You mean so once seven we got million doof. So once we got back from the RV trip, like I had to keep putting like this this um, pain killing cream on it, the antibacterial cream, and meanwhile I had this scar that I still have now. It was still like open, so I had to put gauze around that. Oh, at that same time that you had the stuff in the jujitsu yeah. on the leg too, because you saw the stuff in jujitsu and they checked your feet also. Yeah, some stuff from like jujitsu, from grappling, the mats, we and both whatever. Got it. We both got on our legs. Yeah, so the skin started. But that started was different than the stuff on your foot, yeah, right? Yeah, I was talking. Yeah, the, this, the, so, that was different. So, well, uh, so I just had to deal with it for the rest of the RV trip. And good thing it was like towards the end of the RV trip, or at least I think it was. So once we got back, um, mommy, she went online and she started researching about it and she found like what, like she was talking with some doctor online and he got and gave us a prescription. So we went to the pharmacy and we picked it up. It was oral. So we, uh, I injected it the first time into my mouth and I'm like, ew, that, that stuff. It was, that was like half as bad as your drink. Like oh, that, that was nasty. All right, like, that's a, is that the end? No, that so fact? we had to take it for like a few months and then- Few mom, months? Maybe like- yeah. No, it must have been like two weeks or 10 days. By the time it was like done, it was like three months. There's no way you had a prescription- We picked it up twice again medication. after that. Oh, maybe because you still had funk foot. Yeah, we did, so- Yeah, by the time it was over, it was like three months. Jesus. So we had it for like around two months. So mommy finally decided that she's gonna bring it to the doctor. And I didn't really feel good about going to this doctor. Not because it was doctor, either way, like it just in general, I don't like going to doctors. But I don't mean to talk down to this. Um, Watch your words. What? I didn't wanna go because the doctor's office was called Number C. Number, Number C. C. Like the person who had the doctor's office had like dyslexia or something. Dyslexia. <laughs> Number C. <laughs> anyway, no one likes doctors. You know how screwed up what kind of job it is. That even like a dentist. Man, you're, you make All day you have people come in there that just hate you and don't want to see you and are miserable. Worst Why part of their day and they have to deal with you as a dentist. All right, but let's keep it rolling. So, we gotta no, keep no, it. No, it was done. So when we went there, the guy, I told the Stop flicking me. So I told the guy, because nobody else knew how to pronounce it correctly, so I told the guy what we were taking. I don't remember it now anyways. So I told him, I told our doctor what we were taking, and he's like, oh, you guys can't take that anymore. That was only for the beginning part or whatever. So he took a look at this car too, and at the end, he prescribed us new medication. We went to the pharmacy, we picked it up. And right then, like still in the pharmacy, like we did when we picked up our first prescription, we tried it. It was pink. <laughs> is this the long version of this story or the short version? This? You're breaking my brain. Do you want the long version? Oh my God, this is the short version? We still have another question to get. No wonder this 17 questions is taking 17 shows. We still have another joke and a question to do and we gotta wrap so, it up in the next couple minutes. So it was pink and I'm like, this might, uh, this one might be better. So, I took the first dose, and I'm like, this is delicious. It was like bubblegum <laughs> flavored. Delicious. It was like bubblegum flavored, and by the time we were done with the whole entire thing, and it was healing on its own, and we didn't need any more medication, I'm like, I want to keep taking this. It takes so much. So you got addicted to bubblegum Pepto-Bismol. All right, next story. Next, one more question. Let's make it a quick one. Okay. Or a joke. I want to do a joke. Go oh, quick, one more, Fish one more. Shop. See if I can break this, get up above the line. What do you call a person with a book in their pocket? Pocketbook. 
bag lady, person with a book, bookworm, book nerd, a person with a book in their pocket. I, I don't even know this answer to it. Book in their pocket, a pocket book, a purse, a man. Just purse. like a book. Like what kind of book? Just like Read, a, so if you a worm, have, bookworm. So pocket worm. Stop talking. What are you do? He's interrupting. You should have to start over. Yeah, start he, over. He keeps start over. Okay. Say the question one more time. What do you call a person with mm -hmm. a book in their pocket? Is this figure outable? I don't know. I don't even know the answer. Stop talking. Sorry, sorry, it's not for you to learn. You should already know it. You guys don't tell, show each other your jokes because you're afraid you're going to steal them. Mm, what person with a book know? in their pocket. Uh, a a, a librarian. Give me a hint. Oh, I got it. Give me a hint. Damn it. It's kind of like a kitty word that people usually don't use. I and think I know what it is. It's usually used for nerds. Nerds. Little kid nerds use it. I, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Book. Geek. Dweeb. Weasel. Nerd. Turd. Those are what we call what we used when I was a kid. I don't know the word now. To now the generation. No. If you said nerd in school, there's like detention for a week, then you're suspended for a week, and then... For saying nerd? Yeah. When I was a kid... There was a teacher calling mother effers nerds. She's like, you're a nerd. She's like, all my nerds, the nerd group come over here and the rest of you dumb kids oh, go over if, there. If you said that, there'd be crying everywhere. We had there a substitute be, you'd teacher. Get a spell. Spell. You'd get a you'd get spelled. We had a arrested. substitute teacher one time that was like, my generation was already sort of not too, too bad, but the generation before mine was bad. They brought a substitute teacher from that generation. She was like 70 or 80 years old, this old lady. This kid was talking and she had to tell him a second time to stop talking when he was when she was talking. She made him stand up and hold an encyclopedia out with his arm, like a big fat encyclopedia, like that thick of a book. And if his arm bent a little bit, you know what a yardstick is? Like a three foot wooden uh -huh. ruler? She would smack him? Whoosh! Until he straightened it back out in front of the whole class. And this went on for a couple minutes. Are you gonna, you're not gonna stop talking? You learned a lesson? In front of the class, he stood in front of the class and held out an encyclopedia in his arm. And if it bent, did, teach, did the principal know about this? They didn't care. That was just the way. I mean, she was a little. That was like a. That was definitely not a normal thing in my generation. But that's how what it was like the generation before. But teachers saying nerds or dumb or stupid or oh, shut teachers, up or shut up. Teachers don't. They like, happen. Hey, sweetie, don't. Talk. And that's if the that problem. That's again, the problem nowadays. That's the problem nowadays. Like, would you kids over there shut? Like, literally, the teacher. I might be sort of exaggerating a little bit. I'm not really for sure, but like. The nerds go over there, like the teacher would say that. I'm pretty. They're, they, I'm I maybe off a little bit. I don't they know. Like but, they're, 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 my point is, it's a different time. We did word. asses up. They played asses up with us. The game where you're pegging people in the back of the head and they with don't a tennis allow, ball. They don't even allow you to play dodgeball anymore. Jeez. Dodgeball is forbidden. All right, so we this we gotta wrap this episode up. But is there a question that could be a quick one? Do you have any one that would be quick? I know there's almost no such thing as a quick one with us. Nope. So we'll save the rest of those questions for the yeah, next episode. Three more questions. We'll, we'll wrap I have this a really up. quick question about the school, but I, I forgot what it was. Well, that doesn't make very good podcasting. <laughs> you yeah. let us know in the next episode if you come up with yep, that idea. It's we'll, not a plan, plan. And we'll, and we'll put the, or well, you can only really see that little skit bef behind the scenes on YouTube. So if you want to see that little skit, you could go to free go to go to my YouTube channel or go to. The My YouTube. YouTube channel. It's going to be posted on yours? Yeah. All right. Let's wrap this up. Anything you want to tell the fine people before we finish off here? No! Excuses! Hey, you know if someone doesn't know what you're saying, they have no clue what you're saying? No excuses. And yeah. also... No, no excuses. And also, if you could smash that subscribe button, click the notifications bell, share miss out on, on any, any new videos, videos, share, comment with your pets, family, goats, whatever you want to share with, and the like <laughs> the video. That was very dramatic. And like. And we will see you next time. This has been episode number four, four of, of Breaking, the Breaking the Cycle. Breaking the Cycle. Podcast. Podcast. We will see you next time. In case no one told you that today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never give it up, I ain't never give up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you. I ain't worried about you, I ain't never give up. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never give it up, I ain't never give up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you.